Even if war and climate change prevent humanity from annihilating itself, there are still other existential risks we must be prepared for. Before we started adding to them, Earth already had a lot of threats, some of which our species has only recently encountered. Asteroids, like the one that is thought to have wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, are one of the most obvious threats. The cautionary dinosaur tale seems to suggest that we focus our attention upward as we attempt to foresee our own doomsday. That is logical, and with investments in asteroid tracking and even deflection, humans are shrewdly preparing in ways the dinosaurs couldn't. However, as two scientists point out in a recent opinion, we shouldn't let asteroid concern obscure another enormous threat that is right in front of us – volcanoes. Scientists are currently attempting to forecast how any ticking time bomb will detonate or fizzle out. The western region of the United States is home to one of these sleeping giants. It's known as Yellowstone. It periodically stirs, but it hasn't awoken from its sleep in about 70,000 years, but a Chicago-sized portion of it has been pulsing. Is this a signal that it is finally emerging from its sleep? What would happen, and what would it signify for us if the volcano erupted? Let's find out. Even though they may not be as unusual as fireballs from space, volcanoes should nonetheless be respected. As opposed to asteroids, volcanoes are already present on Earth. They are dispersed all across the world, frequently hidden by beautiful landscapes that conceal their destructive potential. The majority of the horrific eruptions that modern people have witnessed pale in comparison to the approximately every 15,000-year outbursts of supervolcanoes. This kind of super-eruption last occurred around 22,000 years ago. In 1815, Mount Tambora in Indonesia experienced its most recent magnitude 7 eruption, which is believed to have killed 100,000 people. The Year Without Summer in 1816 was brought on by the ash and smoke, which on average decreased world temperatures by 1 degree Celsius. Numerous agricultural failures caused hunger, disease epidemics, and armed conflict. A bubbling caldera in northwest Wyoming's Yellowstone National Park is the remnant of a massive volcanic eruption that occurred 640,000 years ago. The 3,472-square-mile park surrounding the caldera is home to a geological paradise of bubbling pools and springing geysers, all of which are fueled by magma and extremely hot fluids that are churning in the rock below the surface. The ground swells as magma flows into a magma chamber or reservoir that is located 6 to 10 kilometers that's four to six miles under the park. The ground collapses as the magma starts to harden and cool. Volcanologists who have been monitoring this activity since 1923, but in 2010, the ground started to sink. Many scientists are speculating about the possibility of an impending Yellowstone eruption due to the period of gradual continuous growth. Concerns have been raised regarding the potential intensity of the eruption if it occurs. More than 500 hydrothermal features can be seen in one of these locations, the Norris Geyser Basin, to the northwest of the caldera. These ferocious geysers and pools frequently undergo daily changes, but there has also been a far broader shift. For more than 20 years, a region larger than Chicago that is located around the basin has, it is challenging to determine the precise origins of any given movement in a volcanically active area like Yellowstone. However, a recent study might shed some light on why this area of land has been inhaling and exhaling. In order to estimate what might have happened beneath the Norris Giza Basin surface based on the changes above, Researchers examined decades' worth of satellite-based radar and GPS data. 
When a magma body intruded beneath Norris in the late 1990s, fluids trapped inside it erupted and moved through the rocky maze above them. The ground would inflate as the fluids became trapped and pressure built up. As the fluids were allowed to escape to other locations, the ground would deflate. Today, magma-derived fluids might be found just a mile or two below the surface of the Earth. To be clear, the new research does not suggest that the supervolcano, which last erupted 640,000 years ago and formed the caldera of Yellowstone, is any more likely to explode now. The tallest active geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser in the park, has instead been erupting at a record-breaking rate since March 2018. These geologic movements may help to explain why. Researchers also hypothesize that there may be a marginally higher risk of hydrothermal explosions occurring in the basin as a result of the changes below Norris. The geology of Yellowstone is intricate and secretive, and underground explorations are especially difficult. Researchers do, however, concur that the rising and sinking ground can be explained by the injection of a sizable mass of magma and the fluids that escaped during the eruption. The oldest thermal region in Yellowstone is Norris Giza Basin, where evidence of thermal features dates back around 115,000 years. It's also the hottest, with a temperature of 459 degrees Fahrenheit, around 1,000 feet below the surface. The steamboat geyser in the area is an example of how quickly and unpredictably this scorching section of Yellowstone may shift. The 400-foot-tall geyser hasn't erupted regularly in the past. The time between big eruptions has typically ranged from 4 to 50 years. However, since March of last year, Steamboat has erupted up to once weekly. The Giza erupted 32 times in 2018, setting a record that was surpassed the following year when it erupted 48 times. Although this mercurial Giza's hyperactivity has drawn attention from the general public, scientists are more intrigued by the dramatic quivering of the basin itself. An 18-mile-long region climbed 4.7 inches between 1996 and 2004, then fell back to 2.8 inches between 2005 and 2013. Then, in late 2013 and early 2014, the area abruptly began to rise once more at a rate of 5.9 inches per year the highest rate of uplift ever recorded within Yellowstone National Park. A magnitude 4.9 earthquake that shook Norris Giza Basin in March 2014 abruptly stopped the upward movement that had appeared to be unstoppable. The basin is currently about 5 inches higher than it was in 2000, despite the land continually fluctuating between rising and sinking until early 2019. Geologists believe that the Norris Giza Basin upheaval began between 1996 and 2001, when magma rose just short of nine miles beneath the surface. Radar and GPS data from satellites were used to track the deformation of the basin. The basin is situated on a network of faults and vents known as the Norris Mammoth Corridor, just outside the youngest caldera of the supervolcano's northwest rim. The magmatic intrusion caused the uplift events that occurred from 1996 to 2004, and as the magma cooled, dissolved fluids were able to burst out. This procedure reduced the magma's internal pressure, causing it to deflate like a leaky balloon. Between 2005 and 2013, the ground likely descended once more as a result of this process. Since then, the ground has been rising intermittently as a result of the escaping fluid becoming periodically trapped in pockets beneath layers of rock. The team surmises that magma-derived fluids are currently present in Norris Giza Basin just below the surface. 
Thousands of years old hydrothermal explosion craters are widespread in the area. They result from geologic pressure cookers of confined, scorching water that violently depressurize and flash boil into steam if the rock cracks, an event that is nearly impossible to predict. Major explosions are rare, but Norris Giza Basin could experience a fresh blast anytime. Explosions caused by hydrothermal processes may be a little more likely to happen if fluids have accumulated near the basin surface. The rocky plumbing networks, however, are incredibly intricate, with minute, imperceptible changes constantly altering the likelihood of a blast. The team does not advise banning tourists from the area because the likelihood of further explosions is still quite remote. What to expect if Yellowstone begins to tremble tomorrow is the big question. The majority of experts say it's unlikely to be the end of the world, despite the fact that they may not know all that will happen. However, the degree of recent subterranean activity feeds conjecture about how powerful an eruption will be. The volcano has risen at the quickest rate ever observed over the last 10 years. In addition, Yellowstone experiences between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes yearly. Most have magnitudes of three or fewer, making them essentially undetectable. However, these earthquakes help scientists understand how quickly the magma chamber beneath the park is expanding. A recent infusion of magma into the reservoir may be indicated by an increase in the shaking and rattling heard throughout the park. Scientists don't believe that the rumblings in the magma chamber represent a hazard anytime soon, despite the rise in earthquakes. It isn't easy to foresee what exactly is happening in Yellowstone, making it challenging for geologists to forecast Yellowstone's next move. This is because no one has been around to analyze every event that takes place there. Examining the volcano's distant past does offer a hint of sorts. According to geologic data, Yellowstone has seen three massive eruptions in the last 2.1 million years. According to volcanologists, the eruptions happen at intervals of between 600,000 and 800,000 years. The last major event is thought to have occurred about 640,000 years ago, and there is evidence of it throughout the park and thousands of kilometers of the surrounding area. The majority of the continental United States was blanketed in large volumes of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other volcanic debris from each of the prior eruptions. There have been some materials discovered as far away as Louisiana. Following each of these eruptions, the Yellowstone supervolcano fell in on itself, engulfing the surrounding terrain, including all of the trees, mountains, and other features. Calderas are the depressions created by this occurrence. In Yellowstone, a caldera-forming eruption would pose a huge natural hazard. According to scientists, the most recent Yellowstone explosion was 1,000 times more powerful than the infamous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which destroyed hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon and claimed the lives of 56 humans and thousands of animals. Look, fast-moving currents of hot, dry rock fragments and gases known as pyroclastic flows race through the area at startling rates, burying or crushing anything in their path. The once beautiful scenery was scorched for miles by magma erupting from the earth. The 50 kilometers or 30 mile wide and 70 kilometers, 45 mile long Yellowstone caldera itself contains some remnants of the most recent eruption. In a region known as the Lava Creek Tuff, one can still observe the thick volcanic debris that was left over after the eruption. It is improbable, according to USGS officials, that another large eruption like the last one would occur. 
In fact, according to representatives of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, lava flows and hydrothermal explosions, which occur when hot water and steam are released instead of molten rock, are the most likely future events to occur. Lava flows are a particular kind of magmatic eruption, but they are not as destructive as the explosions that create calderas. Lava flows gently and oozes out of the ground over the course of days, months or even years, as opposed to causing instantaneous destruction. They are also not very common. The last lava flow in Yellowstone happened roughly 70,000 years ago, but even now, hikers may still see traces of previous eruptions along the park's pathways in the shape of unique rock layers. In the vicinity of the cliffs around the Upper Giza Basin, close to Old Faithful, there is some indication of newer lava flows. One of the most well-known visitor attractions in the park is the Giza known as Old Faithful. Yellowstone is currently sleeping, and scientists are watching every cough and hiccup to try to forecast what will happen next. The period when it is predicted to grow more unstable is approaching. The Volcanic Alert Level VAL, for the Taup Volcano, a supervolcano located beneath Lake Taupo, the largest lake in New Zealand, was raised from 0 to 1 on September 20th. Level 1 denotes sporadic volcanic agitation. On the North Island of New Zealand, Lake Taup is located inside the enormous caldera of a supervolcano, about 6 miles above the magma chamber. 25 eruptions of the volcano have occurred in the previous 12,000 years. In geologically recent times, the Taup supervolcano caused two of the world's most violent eruptions. Taup is still regarded as active. For the first time in history on September 20th, authorities upgraded the alert level from zero, low thermal activity near the volcano, to one, small disturbance with a low likelihood of steam eruptions, gas emissions and earthquakes. This modification was performed in reaction to more than 700 earthquakes recorded since May 2022 and a two centimeter rise of the lake's eastern portion which indicate that magma and hydrothermal fluids are in motion deep beneath the caldera. The volcanic alert system is based on six levels, the increased caution, an impending eruption at this moment is incredibly unlikely. The typical underlying movements of molten lava, which fracture the overlying bedrock, can cause surface changes and seismic swarms in large caldera systems like Yellowstone. Scientists believe that Taub's volcanic disturbance may last for months without actually erupting, but it might also result in landslides brought on by earthquakes, mud lahars, a particularly destructive form of mud flow or debris flow, and ground subsidence. There is no one model that can adequately capture the course of these devastating catastrophes, making it very challenging to predict how supervolcanoes may erupt in the future. When these massive volcanic systems erupt, the resulting super eruption represents the most catastrophic of events brought on by a terrestrial natural hazard. It can produce blankets of widespread ashfall and hundreds of meters thick, 700 to 1000 degrees Celsius hot debris avalanches that can cover thousands to tens of thousands of square kilometers. A violent eruption of this magnitude does not happen very often, perhaps once per 10,000 to 100,000 years. However, scientists admonish us to enhance our comprehension and communication of such low risk but high impact events. Therefore, it's crucial that we keep an eye on and comprehend these periods of turbulence in order to rapidly spot any clues that might point to an impending eruption. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind blowing videos about space.